everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. So in this episode I'd like to stray a little bit from the let's play a bit and do a little bit of a look at well some automation. Uh, primarily it's a bit vanilla so that's why I'm sort of deviating from the pack. So let's have a look at what I'm looking to trying to do. So what I was trying to do is to automate the setup with Magnetograft so that everything goes through without blocking and I've done that. Now what I've done is built this bit of automation over here. What it's doing is it's taking all the, the items out of here and then it's sorting into here Flint. So Flint will be coming into here and not ending up in the furnace, which is what I want really, because <laughs> it was blocking the furnace. So therefore everything, every, all the metals are coming out here and as you can see it's processing them fairly well. I went and did a whole load of mining. The sieve is actually the slowest part of the process, as you can see. Everything's blocked up back here, including gravel, and the gravel will turn into flint. So, in here I've got quite a few items, or stacks of basically items in here, and also quite a few bits and pieces in here. It's already finished off that stack and started with the, the iron. So the iron's being processed nicely, and then we'll get lead and silver. Probably just let's have a look, let's have to look at the hopper, because the hopper will take next one out of here maybe nickel don't know we'll see because it'll get replaced by something else so what I've done is I want to explain that all of that automation here so for example there's two bits to this so let's start with this bit here so this is the first bit is the insertion part in here so this is a dropper and it's pointing upwards so when you've got a dropper in your hand, I've actually got some stuff prepared. I think it's in here. Let's take it out of here. So I haven't got any droppers in there. It doesn't matter very much. But all these droppers are pointing upwards except for this one, which is pointing sideways. So what happens is you've got an item in here. So let's put in, say, a slab, a granite slab into there, and then turn this on. Now what happens is that granite slab then moves up to here. When you turn it off, it stays in here and you turn it on again he gets flicked out the top <laughs> which I then catch <laughs> magic huh? so that is how we're actually getting items out of here but let's have a look at this what we need is a comparator we put a, we're going to make a clock basically this works as a clock so we've got a comparator down here facing into this block actually let's remove this block first of all put down a piece of redstone so when there's nothing in it, as you can see from one probe on the top left, it's got doesn't say, it just says redstone, no tool. But as soon as we put something into this dropper here, it'll get a signal, and it'll get a signal of one, like that. Now with the with the block being placed here like that, let's put that block back again, and put the redstone down here, for example. The block will transmit the redstone at the same at the same level so this has got a signal of one power one as you can see so the, the so block is not reducing the signal at all so let's remove that and put in its place a a repeater like that oops wrong one try again facing this oh god it's not level nine it's facing this sig this direction and that of course will have then a signal of 15 put it down like that and you can see here the power is 15 because the repeater boosts it up to 15. So to make a clock circuit, what you do is you then take it across back into here like that. And then this will be a clock circuit and it will actually flick. Now it's gone off. I have to remove this, I think. Yeah. So now you see the clock is, is ticking away. So as we put an item into here, that should get moved up. Well, it won't get moved up yet, because because that's just the clock. So to make that move, all we have to do is put a piece of redstone on there like that. And if I go and come around here, I've got the the block in here. So that's how that's working. And it's night time, so we're going to have to have a quick sleep because this is this is a survival game still. <laughs> we don't want the mobs around too much. So that explains how the items come out of here. And one item comes in and it flicks it out basically like that now the next thing is the sorting part and that's described here so what we have are hoppers and in the hoppers we've got in this case we've got a piece of flint 
Oh, I don't know why I've got flint in just one piece of flint in there actually. Um, and on the top of the hoppers here we've got a comparator and the comparator is pointing outwards. And what that's doing is this basically. So we've got here, um, I've got some cobblestone. Let's remove the cobblestone out of there and put one piece of flint into here. You can see that this has got a signal power of nothing at the moment. Let's put one piece of flint into the hopper and then that's now got a signal power of one. And what it is, if you've got uh, 23 of these, oops, let's try that again. Split it into two, might be a bit more sensible. So if we've got 22 of these, let's look at this hopper again, put that into there, that should ha still have a power of one. And you look at it, one more in here, and now it's got a power of two. Now what's happening here is that when it's got 20, we put, we put in here 22 items. So this has always got a power here of one. When it goes up one more, then the redstone signal gets transmitted down here. Let's demonstrate that. So we've got to take these flints out of here like that. And come across here. So what we do is we put the 22 in here. So that's got a power of one. And this has not got no power at all. So put in the next one. Like that. And you saw it actually just, oops. You saw it disappear down. Let me just stop that. Um, let's break the, the repeater in here. Don't need that for the time being. Let's do that again because because that'll have ended up in here, of course. So let's put that back into the hopper here. So now it's got a signal of two here and one down here that one activated is actually still got one here as well so if we actually take the um, a block of piece of redstone from there like that and put that say here try again <laughs> not trying to sleep this should have a signal also oh it won't have a signal of anything because it's too far away but that's got a signal of two but this block should also be transmitting it out that's what the repeater's for so you put the repeater back down again if we can that is and that'll then amplify that to 15 and that will then turn off this redstone torch so that's what this is for here like that so there's only 22 items in here at the moment let me put in some more so we can actually see it doing the stuff that we want it to do um, in this chest here. So let's put in 19 into here and you'll see that's going down into here like that. This will be turned off until it reaches 21 again, uh, 22 again and then it'll go back on again. So in this top hub we should have 22 items which is what we have got I think. 22. So what you do is you fill it up like this. And so that nothing else can go into the here except for flints. There is another way to do this, and that is like I've done it over here. Basically, I filled it up with netherrack. So if I put in 33, uh, any more than three of these, let's put in three here, it'll take one out and put leave the other two in here, so like, like that. So then we get another, we get a jack o' lantern in here, and there's one in here too. So that's how the sorting system basically works. So anything at the end of the sorting system that you, you put in is going to end up in this chest here. So for example, let's just put into this a granite block. Granite block will go through into here, try to go into here, can't do. Here it can't do, so it should end up in there, which it has done. It goes, it basically it goes down first of all from hoppers to hoppers and then across. So if it can't go down here, which it can't do because it's filled with flints, it goes across to the next one. And this this one will be empty and try to send it into that one. It can't go into there. So it then sends it into the next one, which goes straight into that chest. So that is, I think, basically how it works. The whole process from start to finish. I hope that's clear. <laughs> I think that's it. It didn't take too long to explain, did it? So. So what's happening with that, our system back here, let's kind of look at this again. Of course I could do this differently. I could do this with um, immersive engineering sorting stuff, but I'm not ready to do that yet. So all the items come out here, get into this, into here like that, and then they should end up in here, but this, the clock will actually tick them across. So there's nothing in here at all. So in these three dropper, two, three droppers, there's nothing, and that one there. So it will then go into that chest, into this hopper here, 
nothing in these hoppers you see and the last one will be here flint so I've got 22 flint in here so any flint will end up in here so that we started off 60 now we've got 63 and any of the everything else will go into this chest which will then be taken out and put straight into the furnace of course I could have put the furnace right beside <laughs> the hopper which is probably a sensible thing to do anyway so it doesn't have the two steps like that oh look the squid's trying to commit suicide over there <laughs> so that is how that automation works it works really nicely so i can come along here and put stuff in if i want to do it but cook anything up earlier on and if i don't then i can just stick it in i could even stick it in this hopper here of course in this chest i mean oh and this yeah that's one thing else that's another thing that's a trap chest you, does tell you oak trap chest and that's an ordinary chest so they don't link together that was the other part of the the process in fact i think that's you can use that or of course in minecraft 12 um as we're, as we're playing at the moment you can use other chests so for example here i've also got trap chests linking together one trap one ordinary but i could have put an oak chest or a dark oak chest or a, a birch chest or any of the other chests that, that here instead of that one so that's I hope that's it I haven't bothered to build this on camera because I'll link two videos one explains it the red same part and the other one explains the build because I don't think there's any point in explaining the build it's not difficult right so that is it for I think this episode I'm going to cut it short here and just leave it as a tutorial so what I'm going to do next is I would like to do some uh, immersive engineering stuff um, so until then I'll say bye for now <laughs>